Hello everyone, this is General Hand Grenade. Welcome to my war room in Prince George, British Columbia. Okay, so I'm uploading a video right now that, uh, that uh, I finished earlier today. And um, that was the third video in the series of uh, the first game that I played of Global War 1936 to 1945. And if you haven't seen those videos, then I encourage you to go check them out. It's uh, they're, it's going to be long, like uh, got to be over five hours long, maybe six. I don't know, um, and I don't expect you to to watch it all in one sitting. But if you're interested in this game, um, there's a, a very detailed video on a turn by turn uh, how what happened, everything in the game from 1936 to 1945, as seen through the eyes of me, uh, somebody who's never played the game before. I just bought the game. I just uh, purchased all the pieces and everything and it took quite a while just to put all that together and that was my first game. So I, I wanted to make that video um, before I did any, uh, before I even learned the game because, well, you know, like I was trying to learn the game, but I mean, I didn't want to wait till two or three games in to make the video because I wanted to make the video for people who wanted to get into this game. This game isn't everywhere, like Access and Allies is more common. And you can, there's people that can teach you how to play it. But uh, this game is, is kind of intimidating in that it's, it's so big and so detailed and everything that um, it, uh, it can scare a lot of people away. So I wanted to make that video to show you um, how, how to get into this game and to, show, and to demystify it for you, to show you what it's all about um, and, uh, and give you my thoughts in real time as to uh, what I thought of what was going on and, and how difficult it was to do things. Uh, I made a lot of mistakes in the game. Not as many as, as I thought I would because I, I took my time. It took me about a week and a half to play that game. Um, the first week, uh, half a week, I was on holidays. So I had a bit more time to play. I, uh, although uh, it was only a, a few days on my holiday that I could play, two or three days. And then, uh, then I was working for the last, uh, uh, last third of the video for sure. So um, that uh, actually the last two thirds of the video, I think. So I didn't have as much time to play. Like it, it took a lot longer to play after that. Anyway, so um, I left the uh, last video not uh, having added up the score. And I didn't even look at how to add the score up. I wanted to just play the game without, you know, going over and taking this country to give me an extra point or doing that. I wanted to play the game straight up to see how that would translate to the points. Uh, and the what, reason I did that is because I want to see how accurate the points are. Um, so what I predicted at the end of that video was that I thought that the Allies won or perhaps Russia. So should we find out what happened here? Let's just... Let's just put the camera up here. I'll go get the piece of paper that we had there, or that I had. I added it all up and I think I got it right. Uh, there was one that I was kind of uh, uh, wishy on that I wasn't sure about. So here it is here. The Germany didn't get any points. Japan got six. I thought it was nine. Then I realized there was a cap on this one thing that you could get. I, I had six in there, but it's actually, you can only get three for that one thing. So. Six points in total, so, uh, and Italy had one, so they had seven points. Russia had five points. I thought they would have had more than that, but you know, that's why I didn't read the, read the victory conditions. If I'd read them, then there was a couple of things, like there was a point or two they could have got near the end there. Um, but like I said, I didn't want it to be that way. I wanted it to be um, straight up. Uh, and there's the Allies at eight points, so the Allies just barely squeaked out a win. Um, UK had two, Far East Command had one, Anzac had one, the KMT had one, and the USA had three. Like, it's hard to believe the KMT got a point, but, uh, and, and <laughs> it's, uh, there's no communists, so that's, they got a point. <laughs> Even though they didn't take the communists out. Um, so there they are, like, there. you can see there's just a couple of militia there, and they just entered late in the game. Uh, and there's no communists, so they got their point there. One of the things that I, I wasn't sure about, and, and the Americans, I gave them a point for, uh, you were supposed to give a point if, um, if uh, Russia, 
uh, to contain the spread of communism if they had under a certain number of countries or uh, colonies. And what I, I wasn't sure about is like, is all of Turkey a country or is it just one territory? Because it didn't say territories, it said countries or, uh, or colonies. And so they didn't actually have any countries. Like you look up there and there's, there's Poland there, but uh, they don't have all of the green. So they don't have that country. And uh, they don't have, they, they have part of, of Turkey, but they don't have all of that country. And those are the only two they're in. So they would have, the Americans wouldn't have got that point. I think it's three, ter three countries. So there's a territory, two, three, four, five territories um, that, uh, that the Russians have, but they don't have any countries. And so I'm, I'm, if you know, if, if I'm doing that wrong, then let me know. And then it would be a tie game, <laughs> which would be a drag. Play for a week and a half, or was it two and a half? I can't even remember. And, uh, and, and just and not even have a winner. But... Um, like if, if if you look at the game though, if it was to continue, I think there's no doubt that uh, that like Germany was going to be eliminated. Germany, well, Europe was going to fall. Put it that way, Germany and Italy would have been eliminated eventually, right? Um, but uh, um, Japan was doing strong. Japan was really strong. Like they were not going to get taken out. Maybe never. Like it would have taken um, an atomic bomb to, to take them out of the game because they had so many more ships than the Americans. But the Americans, like that was by, for a reason. I mean, it was late in the game by the time the Americans were allowed to join the game. And uh, for them to start building a bunch of uh, capital ships and stuff would have taken forever. Uh, and so um, they just, they couldn't prosecute that war in the Pacific. Like they did come down here and they did have a, a pile of ships in here um, and the Japanese came down and took them out. But the Americans, that, like it was late in the game, they, they had to do something, right? Otherwise they would have just sat over there with a huge Navy and done nothing. And that's what they've built themselves up to since that time, since they lost this Navy down here. So, you know, like they would have just built a, a Navy big enough now to come across and, and, and fight the Japanese and the game would have been over anyway. So they came down here uh, and, and it's a good thing that they did because what that did was, uh, was it drew the Japanese down here. It drew everything they had down here, every ship they had, and they were able to take them out, but um, that, that drew them away from the Far East Command, which are very strong. Uh, they managed to get a point because of how strong they are. And it uh, drew them away from the Russians and the, uh, the Japanese lost a point because one of the victory objectives is the border there. Uh, is does Japan have twice as many troops along the border as Russia does? So you look here, Russia's got three. There's there's three militia here, and um, and Japan has uh, five. <laughs> so they almost had that one. These guys are not Japanese. I know the color looks like it, but those are Mongolians. So. Um, uh, when you're looking at the border there, they don't have twice as many. And Russia had the same victory objective, but they obviously didn't have more than the Japanese did. Um, so the, the Russians did get points for, for being outside of, for taking territories outside of their own. Um, uh, they actually did very well. You know, if, if I had kept going with the Spanish Civil War, then that would have made a difference as well. You know, like uh, whether the Nationalists won or whether the uh, Republicans won. That could have swung the game either way, uh, that one point there. Be well, it would have been two points because either one side gets a point or the other side gets a point. So that's a difference of two points, right? So that could have, like if uh, the yellow units you see here, the Nationalists, if they had won this war, then, uh, then that would have made it a tie game, right? And if the other, if the um, Russians would have won it, then that would have given them another point. So that one I did not finish off. So the victory conditions are okay. Um, it, it, I don't know. It feels like you play the game for a long time just to add up some points. 
and near the end of the game, uh, if, if I was looking at them before, if I knew what they were, then I would have been, okay, I need to take this, this territory and this territory and this territory, and then I get another point, you know. And really, I didn't want those territories. I wanted to take the Germans. Uh, so that would have been, that would have sidetracked me, right? And the Germans, you know, if, if they'd just taken this one here, that was a point, right? So I didn't want to do that because that's not, that was not in my best interest to do that when I was playing Germany. Um, but when you look at the points, then yes, it would have been in your best interest. But so, um, the, the points could have changed if, uh, and obviously, and I knew that if I'd have looked at it, right. If I'd have taken the time to study those, um, then I would have known, okay, I should take that. And these guys should take this and these guys should make sure they have one more unit over here to have twice as many and, you know, things like that. Right. So, uh, anyway, uh, that's the scoring and, and that's who won the game. So let's take a look at the game here, and, and uh, uh, it actually went, you know, almost exactly like World War II went, which is, which is, I think, a credit to the designers of the game. Um, what I found with Axis and Allies, and why I kind, of, one of the reasons why I kind of uh, wanted to move on from that, and I still will play Axis and Allies because it's a very fun game, uh, Global Forty. It's a fun game to play, but you look at in here. Uh, for instance, like uh, these are all neutral countries in here, uh, neutral territories. And, and if uh, you've watched my channel much, you know I've got this Middle Earth strategy of Global 40 where the British take over this space right in here and they just pile a shit ton of dudes and that's where they start with. You know, but these, like nobody ever took these ones. Uh, and that's because of the rules of the game, the way the rules are designed. So there was no, there was no land uh, crossing between FEC and like and the UK so between UK Europe and, and UK Pacific put it that way if you're thinking in, in Axis and Allies terms there was no connection that was over land uh, and that's the way it was in the war like the Middle East really didn't have much to do with it it could have like if, if the Germans had had, uh, had defeated uh, had won the Battle of Stalingrad here then they would have come down here into the oil fields like they ran out of gas, uh, almost almost totally ran out of gas uh, because uh, they, they they didn't have any oil. So they needed to get down here to the oil fields and even further down into Iran and to Iraq where, where all the oil is. I mean, we all know where the oil is. It's in the Middle East, right? But that's what, what the Germans needed to do. And they got stopped at Stalingrad, right? And so that's why one of the, one of the big reasons why Germany failed. Uh, I mean, there was lots of them, and, and you don't you can you can post them if you want, but but that I'm just saying that's one of them, and, um, and, and but because of that, there wasn't a big fight over the Middle East, right? I mean, I'm talking about armies and stuff. I'm sure there was lots of spooks in there, and and uh, lots of little things going on between uh, between Iraq and Iran or somebody, right? Afghanistan. I'm sure that. Uh, you know, not everybody was behaving themselves, but there was no big war going on in there. And in this game, that 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 uh, that's the same. And and also like um, in this game, there's uh, there's the Chinese civil war. Like there was a Chinese civil war going on before uh, before World War Two began, right? And and that's the way it is in this game. Uh, there's a civil war going on between the communists here and the rest of the country. And then there's lots of warlords. Like these are the nationalists, the light green. But these are all warlords, uh, warlord territories. And so they don't unite until they're attacked by the Japanese, right? And then then they kind of forget about the civil war between them and, and they fight the Japanese. And then they continue the civil war afterwards and the, China, the communists eventually won. We all know China's a communist country. And, you know, like it's kind of hard to see that right now because of uh, they're they're totally into capitalism now, but they still are communists. Like they're they're still a totalitarian government, but that so that's pretty neat how how this game um, has that in it. And uh, we'll see someday if maybe they come up with an expansion set where where uh, where it enhances the war in in China, like they have the expansion set for um, for Spain there. And Spain, like I could have. Uh, I could have kept going in that, but I kind of lost interest in it. When you're playing this game by yourself like I did, uh, it's really, really difficult to, to be invested everywhere in the board. 
Um, and to try to get it done in under a month, put it that way. Like if I had spent, you know, one day taking Germany's turn, you know, and then the next day I, I took Russia's turn, then that'd be fine. But, you know, like I, I kind of wanted to do that and I wanted to move on to the next series of videos, right? And, I, you know, <laughs> I wanted to see how it all ended, kind of like you did. You're waiting for my last video to come out. I wanted to see how it was going to end too, right? So I kind of skipped over that because, you know, after the first 10 turns of it or so, I was kind of over it, right? But um, uh, I, the next time I play, I won't be. Like, I will use the expansion set for the Spanish Civil War. I didn't this time. This game was completely vanilla, except for one rule that I made up myself, and that was about the technology. But, yeah, like, uh, the Spanish Civil War could definitely be a, a good part of this game. And, and, uh, and the Chinese Civil War, that is something else as well. Um Another thing that I like about this, uh, really like about it, is the way the neutrals are set up, and the uh, like. They're not, they're not just uh, pro axis or pro allies or strict neutral. You know what I mean? They're each one of them has some kind of condition. You know, sometimes there's groups of them that have conditions, like Germany can annex this one and this one and this. Oh no, sorry, this one and this one and this one, um, without having to attack them. Uh, they can do that one per turn, you know, as soon as the game starts. But uh, they can't go go any further to Romania and to Bulgaria and what else is there? Um, and Hungary. They can't go on to those ones there until France falls. They can, but they would have to attack them. Um, and rather than attack them, they, they might as well wait. And uh, and then they get all the stuff that's in there. It's like an they, they annex them, right? So you know, like they'll get the air base and they'll get the the fighter that was there, and they'll get you know whatever whatever was in there. They all become German all of a sudden, uh, and you don't have to attack them anymore. They become yours uh, instead. So it kind of makes you wait. It makes you wait until the appropriate time to take them out. Um, and then there's other ones like Yugoslavia. They're never going to become part of Germany. So, you know, like Germany or Italy, it ended up being Italy attacked them, right? Um, and then on the other side, the Allies are not allowed to attack any of the neutrals. Uh, they can. They can attack anyone they want, but they got to pay 10 bucks to do that, right? And so, uh, like, 10 bucks is a lot of money in this game. There, uh, one thing I noticed that was a striking difference between this and, and Global 40 is that... Um, there's no, uh, there's no um, bonuses that you get. Like there's bonuses for, for other things, but uh, like for instance, the, the Italians here, you know, you don't get a bonus for having, for having this and, and this and, you know, uh, or for having North Africa, you know, like, or for clearing the Mediterranean of ships. Like you just don't get big bonuses like that in this game. So Italy, um, they 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 are never going to be a big power, right? Uh, they're never going to have a lot of money, um, and same like the allies, uh, the the incomes. It took till the end of the game here for the allies to start getting decent incomes. Like uh, Anzac was down at four, you know, for most of the game, and FEC was I think at six for most of the game. These guys were down in the twenties. Uh, France hardly had any money because they got taken out, right? Um, Russia doesn't have it too bad, uh, but they're their own country, right? They don't have any allies. Uh, they've got people that the, that uh, have the same enemy as them, but um, they don't have anybody on their side. So, you know, they needed a little bit more money, right? Um, it, it seemed pretty balanced to me. I thought that Germany was just going to absolutely steamroll over Russia on the eastern front out there. But then, you know, like once, uh, once that got going... And the fact that uh, Russia gets so much money, um, they were able to stop them. Like uh, the, the Germans got up to here, but then like these guys just kept putting out and putting out and putting out and putting out. And uh, they didn't worry so much about over here because the Japanese, they were so busy with the Chinese that uh, they didn't have to worry about the back door over here. And even if J Japan had gotten through there, like Japan is never, ever going to take out Moscow. It is just way too far away, you know what I mean? And I like that. Like, there should be no way that, that Japan could ever take over Moscow like it can in, in Global 40 or the kind of effect that it can have on the Russians. In this game, they can. it's very little effect. So most of the money you get is going after the Germans, and that's the way it should have been. 
Um, and you see up here some of the neutrals up here, like uh, the, uh, the the Russians uh, did not sign the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact with the Germans, and so these guys never got into the war, and the Russians never attacked uh, Norway, so that meant that um, that Sweden never got into the war. Like there's different there's different conditions for uh, different neutrals, right? And that's really cool. The one neutral that the mm -hmm. Allies get is Poland. They, the, all of Poland here goes to the British um, at a certain point in time, like when the war breaks out. Uh, but usually at that same time is when Germany is going to attack them and perhaps Russia is going to attack them. So it's only for a cup of coffee that, that the British get, get Poland like that. Um, and like it's, what I really like though is like you can, you can go in a, and attack a, a neutral and uh, what would be a strict neutral in the other game. And not every neutral in, in, on the board is going to be against you all of a sudden. Like it, it just, it, it's kind of, kind of weird how that, that is in, in Global 40 that, you know, you attack Turkey and all of a sudden Spain's going to care about that and they're going to join the other side, you know, <laughs> or Argentina or somebody, right? Like it just, it doesn't make any sense. So I really like the way that it's done here. With this here, the Germans were able to get this by, um, they didn't even have to attack that. What they did was they took out Transcaucasia. And once either Italy or Germany take out Transcaucasia, then uh, then the Turks joined them. So they, I just replaced all the forces on there with, with Germans. Uh, they had a destroyer in there and there was, uh, I think, uh, a militia over here. So that was how they were able to get that. Um, and then uh, when you have a, ter a territory that borders on Iraq, if you're the Axis, then you get Iraq. And so um, so then the Russians came down and took it away from the Germans as well afterwards. Uh, Germany, like they just, uh, uh, I, I, I don't know what they did. Um, th it seemed they were doing good. Um, but uh, I think uh, I think the Americans went strong over stronger over here than what you might expect. Like they went a little less in the Pacific, and that's why they Japan is so strong. But it, it, like if they had gone uh, stronger over here, then Germany might have broken through. Like at some point in time, Germany had to stop sending so many troops this way uh, because of the Western Front over here, right? Um, and you can see what's happened here. Like they've taken everything but Germany here. Um, the Allies have everything but Germany over here. And and uh, like if if they had gone over here, then I don't think that would have happened. Like the UK by themselves could not have taken back France, right? Um, they they might have been uh, happy to just beat the crap out of Italy down there. And that's what I thought they were going to, to be doing was fighting the Italians, right? Mm -hmm. Like they've got, uh, they've got Cairo over here and the Italians were down here. It actually looked pretty good for the Italians at one point. Um, but then the British made short work of them. And that, that might've been where, where things changed over here was, uh, was then, um, anyway, uh, Germany, they never built a Navy. I don't know, maybe that would have been a good idea. It, it's it's hard to say for me because I haven't seen the game played a different way than what I just played it, right? So I'll have to play it differently another time. I tell you, though, the way I did play the game, um, where it was just me, uh, after talking with other people um, and, and reading stuff online and everything, it seems to me that it, it's been um, an advantage doing that. Like it would have been nice to have somebody who knew how to play the game to play with me the first time. But at some point in time, I would recommend to anybody when they're early in playing this game to play a game by themselves. Even if it takes for, you know, a month or two. Uh, I, obviously you can't do that if you're playing at your kitchen table, right? Uh, but if you have a room like I do here, then just uh, set it up and, and play it over time. The reason is because all of the nations are different. And when I say different, I mean they have different strengths and weaknesses. They have different units. The costs are different. Uh, their goals are different. Um, there's things that, uh, like if I was just playing the Commonwealth, for for instance, I would have no idea what um, what what makes Japan tick. You know how they get bonuses and things like that. Same thing with Germany. How would I know? Or if I was playing Germany, then how would I know? 
uh, truly how to stop the Commonwealth or the Americans if I didn't know what they were about. But by playing the game the way I did, like I had to, okay, it's, it's, it's Germany's turn. So you look at the German card and, and you look at the pieces on the board and you decide, okay, this would be best, you know, at this point in time to do this. And I kind of followed the script, you know what I mean? They push you, like I was talking about with the neutrals here. I took these three neutrals in the first three turns, and then these three neutrals in, in three subsequent turns after that. Um, so, like, uh, I did, uh, I, I kind of followed the script the way it was supposed to go in the pre-war years. Um, and, uh, and then you go on to the Russians, and then you, you learn all about the Russians and what makes Russia tick and what what they're looking for and, and uh, uh, what strengths uh, they have for their weapons and, and where their weaknesses are. And the Japanese and the Americans and the Commonwealth and the French. Not so much the French. I mean, French get the shit beat up. <laughs> this is World War II, right? <laughs> That's what happens. Anyway, uh, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's quite the game, though, I tell you. One of the fascinating things that I found was, um, and, and I do that, it's fascinating, learning every game like this new, uh, when I mean like this, I mean a war game, whether it was Risk or Axis and Allies and all the different iterations or this game, and I suppose uh, 39, the Global War 39 game, um, is the different zones and, and the how to find out what is the best way to get from point A to point B, like getting across an ocean. Like, I'm still a little mystified on how to set up a, a shuck at going across the ocean here so the Americans can keep bringing troops over and recycling their their uh, their transports, right? Um, and But in here, this is where it was really, you know, really fascinating. You know, like the, these troop, or these, these territories and the relationship that they have with, with each other. Like, they're not just a bunch of squares, right? You, you look at them closely and like this territory here, can't get to this territory because of the Pripyat marshes there. But, uh, you know, like it can't get to this territory either, you know? Like it's got to go to this territory, then to this there. But the same goes for the other way. And, you know, and this can't, it, it just, like the, there's, uh, there's, there's routes that you've got to take to get everywhere. And, and they're not, uh, the, I think uh, the, what, what, uh, what, what makes them even more intricate is these cities here, the circles. Like if it wasn't for these circles here, then this territory would go to this territory, to this territory, to this territory, right? But with the, when you add a circle in there, then it, it kind of changes the dynamic of it. And uh, if you look at Moscow here, how many territories it borders, right? Just a ton of them. So that's neat. And it's gonna take a while to get used to that. And that's just the land zones. Like this is, this is a, a really difficult place right in here. Uh, what I found was right in here, uh, difficult to learn, I mean. Um, because of all the different, like I was finding, okay, this is actually a fast track going this way. If you, if you had some guys up in here, uh, or I mean, like you, you putting them on in here, then you could go down to here and then you're right beside Russia rather than going, you know, and it take you an extra turn to get up here. But you could be in Romania in one turn with a, a unit that moved too. Uh, so just things like that, right? Um, and, and how far you can move and, uh, and then there's the uh, then there's the the C zones, like the C zones are, are cut up well, and there's a lot of them. It's not just a matter of going to Hawaii and then getting to Japan from there. It it doesn't work that way. <laughs> it's too far, right? Like you can get there with your ships, uh, your warships, but you can't get there with your transports because transports go two spaces, and most of the warships go three spaces. So when you're at a at a naval base, you're going three space or four spaces. And but your transports are only going three, right? So <laughs> you, you'll leave them behind. So uh, if, if what you're doing is transporting dudes, then you can't go faster than your transports can go. Um, and uh, and you know the South Pacific, that's pretty neat. Lots of uh, lots of cool island play down here. Like here, it's not. This would be one island in in uh, in Global Forty, and in here it's two islands. And this one over here, just like it was, that's actually two different spaces on the one island. So you don't just take the island, you, you have to take both spaces on that island, right? And this is, uh, this is cut into two different islands. Um, actually, it's cut into three different ones, I think, compared to the Global 40 game. And again, they're worth, when you add them all up, they're, they're worth quite a bit too. I think the, 
those islands there be about 10 bucks or something like that 10 or more um see two i don't know three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven eleven bucks for these islands here and that doesn't include the philippines or, or malay or anything um so then um it, it uh the, the mechanics are, are so similar to Axis and Allies that if you were were pretty adept at playing that game, then you can pick this game up pretty easily. There's some striking differences in the uh, the mechanics of the game, but for the most part, you know, a tank is a tank, right? Uh, you just have to learn a, a little bit different move with them uh, when it comes to blitzing. But uh, that's, you know, it's not something that it takes you three years to learn. You know, if I told it to you, then you could do it. Like, it's, it's not hard, right? Uh, you practice it a couple of times and, and you got it down. Um, so the mechanics are, are, are almost the same. But they're, at the same time, they're different, right? Like, they, like I said with the ships there, where they're, uh, they, they go uh, three or two spaces. Whereas in Global 40, they all go the same amount. Uh, another thing you have to get used to is that you can't use other people's naval bases. <laughs> you know, like uh, you can't, uh, the, the American player can't just go over and, and use uh, the British naval base or the British air base. They don't make your planes go further. They don't make your boats go further. They don't repair your boats. You don't repair capital ships at a, at a, at a naval base. You have to go to a shipyard to do that. You know, like the, the, there's uh, there's uh, there's things that uh, are different about this game that uh, make it interesting. You know, and, and these things here, bunkers and, and coastal artillery, they they add a, a they each add a, a, a elements to the game, which are are cool as well, right? Um, like a bunker here, uh, if you attack uh, a bunker, then on the first round of combat. Uh, you roll two uh, two dice, uh, two 12-sided dice at five or less, uh, just in the first round, and that's just for the bunker. And then for any land, tr or sorry, for any troops at all, because it's not just a bunker in there. What it is is um, that ter this whole territory has been fortified well. So even if there were planes in there and everything, everybody gets to roll back uh, plus two. You know, like if you if you roll at four, then now you're rolling at a six. Uh, and that's just for the first round of combat when you've got a bunker. So uh, in the first round of combat, um, you can really kick somebody's ass on defense. And then the coastal artillery here, uh, we'll get into videos on how to and everything. But just as a quick thing, like uh, those work against um, amphibious assaults. So you can either shoot transports with those or you can shoot um, people trying to bombard you, right? Um, either one. And if you sink the transport, you sink the, the people on the transport, the dudes or the tanks or whatever it happens to be on there. Anyway, uh, uh, I like I like the Mediterranean in this one too. Like the Mediterranean in the other one, it just seemed like it was too far to get down to Egypt. You know what I mean? There was that extra space in here in Global 40. And, and so for planes and everything to get down there, it was just... Uh, uh, and when you really think about it, I mean... <laughs> You know, the places you could get with a plane in Global 40, but you couldn't go across the Mediterranean, you know? Like, you could go vast distances in Siberia, but you couldn't go across the Mediterranean. Like, the Mediterranean is not that big. Why shouldn't you be able to go across it, right? So, I like that. I like that they that there's only a few zones in here. Um, they've made a couple of zones up here um, for other reasons. But, uh, like, big zone here, big zone here, big zone here, big zone here. Uh, and that's it. Those are, those are, well, actually, the, there's a zone here as well. So I like that. I like that they made big zones in there. I like the convoy lines. I didn't do much convoy. That's just a, an extra element of the game that uh, is hard to learn. And so, you know, I was trying to mostly focus on, on regular combat, um, trying to get that, that down. So I just was, uh, you know, I just kind of forget to buy transports or, I mean, sorry, uh, uh, submarines. I did do a few uh, a few convoy raiding with the with the Germans and with the Japanese. Most of the convoy raiding is done by the Axis in this game. Like when you look at the when you look at the symbols on here, most of these are 
you'll find are allied symbols, right? Uh, like you'll find there's a Russian one. There is there is one here that's uh, that's uh, Italian, and there's one up in the North Sea there that's a German one, and there's one over here that is uh, that's Japanese. But for the most part, these are all like here's an American one. Most of these convoy lines are for the Allies, right? Um, so most of the convoy raiding in the game is done by the Axis, um, and uh, I think I think it's cool and all. Um, I've seen the rules that they're going to use, like they're thinking about revamping those rules, and I've seen them, um, and so maybe I'll try those. But I wanted to try the the rules that are for the game now, uh, before you know, I confused myself by using a different set of rules that that they're just proposing they haven't put into effect. So you know I want might as well play the game the way it is now, right? Um, and then I'll I'll test their rule their rules once I get comfortable with these ones I think another game or two of playing these ones and then I'll try um, I talked to rank carcass uh, you might know might have seen him before on uh, forums and things like that talking about this game him and I had quite a lengthy conversation yesterday about the game and uh, it, it helped me to understand a lot of the things and I'm glad that I played it uh, for hours and hours and hours first because then I had something to talk about. It wasn't just a, what do you do with this? You know, like it's pretty obvious when you start playing what you do with it, right? Like I had a lot more questions in my mind um, before the game started than I did even two turns in, right? Some things are just are just normal. Um, one of the things that I did do in my game was in July of 1939, I gave everybody a technology role. Uh, you see there's, there's 13 different technologies there. So what I did was uh, you decided which one you didn't want. Uh, so the Germans, like they pick, I, I can't remember what they picked. Let's just say they picked uh, radar. Uh, so then uh, if, if a 10 was rolled, then they would get number 13, their improved shipyards. I think actually it was improved shipyards that they, they picked that they didn't want. So you rolled the dice and you got whatever technology your dice landed on, right? Um, and uh, it actually worked out pretty good. Uh, it, it really enhanced the game. I, I liked the fact that uh, that uh, that people had weapons in this game. The British made great use of, of jet aircraft there, um, and uh, the you know what, what other weapon worked really well for them is the wartime economy. Um, they were able to split the wartime economy with their with these guys down here. Uh, like when you play the British, you, the, the, it, it includes all three. So they were able to split that up between the FEC and, and the, the ANZAC and, and a little bit to the UK. So you kind of decided, okay, I know what I need to do next turn. So how am I going to divvy this up, you know? And and so you, you give these guys three bucks this time and these guys two bucks and, and you take this. It just depended on what you roll. Like you had to roll two six-sided dice uh, and... And, and that worked out good. I mean, it would work out good for anybody, right? But uh, it sure worked out good for the, the Commonwealth because they're a country that doesn't, or yeah, they're a nation that doesn't get much. I could see that being a, a big bonus for a nation like Italy as well. Like if they could get uh, a, a couple of good rolls, a couple of turns in a row where they're rolling like nines or tens or something like that, uh, they could do a lot, you know? Uh, so that's, that's, uh, that's a technology that I'll be interested in for sure when I play this game. Um, the Americans, you'd hardly notice if you got 10 bucks because you're already getting 70 bucks. I'm talking about once you're at war. Um, and uh, like you don't get the technology until you're at war anyway, right? So so anyway, I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, I thank you for joining me for this series. I think this video has gone a little bit longer than I wanted to, but that, I don't care. <laughs> don't watch it if you don't want to. Turn it off, go, go, go outside and play, go ride bikes or something. <laughs> Anyway, I've had a lot of fun doing this, and uh, it's uh, it's been frustrating at times, and uh, uh, not really frustrating in that uh, it, it was no fun. It's just frustrating is oh no, where did I read about that one? And so you got to go find the rule on it and everything, and yeah. So I'm hoping that my the, the, that my videos are going to help you to learn the game without having to to uh, go through all the, that I did in order to learn it. I know uh, it helped me out watching videos from the Hilltop Pillbox and from Panzer Penguin um, and uh, and anybody else that put one up there. I think uh, Old Man Sarge had a couple videos, I watched his. 
So all, all of these videos are, are helpful. Um, and I hope that uh, these videos will be helpful for you as well. The next uh, series of videos that I will get into will be in how to. So it'll, I'll just pick something. I'll pick amphibious assaults or strategic bombing raids or, you know, like some, some, something like blitzing or whatever. And I'll try to make them fairly short so that you can go in short bursts and learn how to do just one thing. Rather than like I did in Global 40 where it's land combat and it teaches you everything to do with land combat. Like that's a good way to do it too. But in this game where there's hardly any resources out there to learn how to play, I'm going to keep it short so that uh, people can go directly to something and, and find out how to play. So that's it. That's the game. The Allies barely won it by the skin of their teeth. And so we're not all speaking German and Japanese now. And thank God for that. So take care everyone. General hand grenade out.